Welcome to Marshall Know Stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around, and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. So I had a pretty long weekend, and like I've said before, I usually only have about uh, enough time for one project per weekend. And since I'm already at the top of Sunday, I need to come up with a project that's going to be pretty fast and easy, but uh, cool enough to be worthy of filming and showing it off. Um, I've had an idea for something in my head for quite a while, and here you see... This thing that I'm leaning on is my box of scrap where I throw all of my uh, steel that I find, different stuff that I have project ideas for. And one thing that I picked up at a flea market was this 13 16 wrench. The reason that I picked up the 13 16 wrench specifically was because my finger happens to fit in it perfectly. Um, and uh, I decided to make it easy on myself and just go ahead and pick up something that already fit my finger and then I'd be ready to go on the project. So <clears throat> I have a couple of different ideas for uh, knives using the uh, box end of a wrench as a finger hole, but this one is going to be especially easy. This will be one that you could probably bang out in less than an hour, even without a bunch of other uh, blacksmithing stuff. Uh, like the stuff that I use regularly. What I'm going to be doing is making a punch dagger out of a box end wrench. Okay, so I'm not even going to pretend to know the legality of carrying or owning a punch dagger in the state or, I don't know, maybe even country in which you live. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell you this video. Don't make it. Uh, unless you know you're going to be legal on doing this. I may not even be legal where I am. I'm not going to tell you where that is, even though I'm very proud of the 505. <clears throat> so don't do it unless you know you're going to be able to uh, be within the confines of the law by doing it. Fair warning, entertainment purposes only. I'm not liable. I think I need to make a pipe tamper next for... Uh, all the stuff that I do, I should have my own that I've made on my own. Okay, you know this drill. Have a specific project with a specific goal in mind. What I'm going to be doing, I'm, as I'm looking at this box end on this wrench, what I need to do is straighten it because uh, box end wrenches are always at a curb so you can get uh, down at the bolts or the nut to stuff. So I need to straighten that out. I'll uh, throw it into the forge. Uh, maybe once is all I'll need. I doubt I'm going to need it more than that because all I really need to do is just straighten it out. So I'm just going to heat it up here in order to uh, get it in the vise and just bend it straight real quick. Straight. And then I'm also looking at maybe about an inch worth of blade, and I'm going to be doing a double-sided dagger blade. Again, I keep doing these knives that uh, they won't fit into a jig. So I'll see if I can't devise a jig in order to put the edge on it, or I might just do it uh, eyeballing it again. First things first, uh, let's get this thing straightened out and yeah. to do it. Um, actually, as I'm thinking about it, this is uh, going to be a quick, easy build. I may not even have to kick on the forge for this. How about if we just use map gas? We'll, I'll, I'll use my torch and get it nice and hot, and then we'll stick it in the vise and see if I can't do it that way. Uh, that way, it's a project. So I'm sure I've told you in the mini sword build. Maybe I didn't. Either way, if you're going to heat steel, uh, look for some map. It's a... Uh, it heats up and it gets hotter than regular propane does. It's a methyl acetyl called petrol propane, I believe, and uh, it'll get your steel hotter faster. We'll be using MAP on this one. If not, uh, the regular propane torch that you usually see me using, it works also. It's just going to be a little bit slower.
wish I still had some oxy math left. I would heat it up with that. I'm out of oxygen though. It's barely getting this colored now. It's already been about two minutes of heating it. That should be enough. Let's take a look. You know what? I'm actually going to dip this in water real quick because I don't want the vise to distort the ring at all. All I want is for it to be malleable up here. And that worked out perfect. So I'm going to overbend it a little bit because I'm looking at it and what matters to me is that the one inch that I'm going to be using outside of the ring is per perfectly per perpendicular to the, uh, the thickness of the ring. Okay, I heated it one more time real quick and uh, just kind of did some fine tuning on it. It didn't take a lot. It took about maybe five minutes total of heating it. It's not super fun because you just have to kind of stand there heating it, but uh, now it's perfectly straight. And uh, I'm gonna be throwing it in uh, into the vise and just cutting it off right along this blue line right here. I think that's gonna give me plenty of steel to shape that into a little uh, dagger blade right there. <clears throat> I'm, gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna be using the uh, angle grinder, but I was thinking about this build and if you didn't have an angle grinder or a belt sander, or any other kind of power tools, you would be able to accomplish this still because all it's going to take is heating it to bend it a little bit. You could cut it off with a hacksaw, and then if you want to spend the time doing it, you could take just a regular rasp, like get get the edge on there, and then uh, a rat tail file and get to. You could absolutely do this build with uh, nothing but hand tools, really using the angle grinder anyway. So I'm going to safety up and uh, throw this thing in the angle grinder and just give it a good cut right there, and then I'll. Uh, trace my little uh, guide with paint pen or Sharpie or something so that I uh, get each side symmetrical and then I'll start shaping it into a blade and uh, that's going to be almost it. I will harden it. So what I'm actually going to do is so that I don't get any dings on the ring side of it again, I'm going to actually clamp down the opposite side in the vise so that uh, if any dings do happen, it's going to be in the piece of the metal that I don't really care about. I actually, pro I actually probably will repurpose the other side of this wrench and make a knife out of that because that still leaves me plenty of uh, room to be able to work that. But uh, here we go. already shaping up once you get that vision you can see how fast this all is going to come together uh, now so I've got my center drawn in and then I did the same angle as much as possible and uh, you can tell it's pretty well symmetrical there I'm just kind of eyeballing it but that's all I'm really gonna need to do uh, just to get the meat off of it I'm actually gonna go outside of these lines also to give me a little bit more meat to play with while I'm sanding it That's pretty well it for that. Now, I'm 
You can see it start to take shape. Like I said before, I'm going to take it in on either side a little bit just to give it that uh, dagger look a little bit more. Just some like divots in here. I'll do that on the top of the belt sander because I've got that perfect half circle that goes over the top of my belt sander. So it's an easy guide to be able to do that. And then I'll start taking it in on all four sides like it should on a dagger. <laughs> Mess around with this thing on the belt sander. I did take in either side a little bit. They've, it's got a kind of cool curb on either side now. And also, you'll notice that I uh, ground down because it was kind of coming, it was flaring out where I actually needed to taper down because that's going to be the blade. So I took that in on either side a little bit and uh, <clears throat> started to roll that. But I'm getting to a point where I know that I need to be more deliberate about what I'm doing with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put paint on either side uh, and then I'm gonna mark it right down the middle like I did uh, whenever I jigged, uh, I don't know, you've, you've seen me do it before whenever I'm jigging a knife. Uh, you mark it right down the middle so you know how far in you have to go on each side and then that way you're not going to be taking too much steel off. All right, I've got uh, my paint on the side of the blade, what is going to be the blade, and a line mark down the middle so that I know where to stop. I know it doesn't really look like the middle, but the whole thing is kind of skewed right now, and the um, the ring itself is kind of off, but it is actually running down the middle where I want it. And um, I was just looking, and I think I am going to be able to accomplish getting this on a jig so that I can get a nice clean angle on that. So I thought using the jig was going to end up working out pretty well for uh, getting the edge on this punch dagger. It didn't end up turning out being that way. The reason being, it's so thick and the blade is so short, it's hard to get those angles on it that you need. You see how skewed that is. I thought it was going to meet in the middle, but by the time that I took both those sides down to where I wanted, it was just so far off. So I'm going to have to end up doing this by hand, which is what I should have done in the first place. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit the hit this blade with the belt sander and just kind of eyeball the rest of it. Get uh, the four sides as equal as I can just by eyeballing it. Okay, it took some doing and I'm glad I left myself enough steel to be able to do this, but I've got even sides on uh, both edges. <clears throat> it's running straight down the middle. I am going to take in the neck a little bit more with an angle grinder like I said I was going to do. I'm going to get on that right now. I'm just going to shape it a little bit and make it look a little bit more trick, a little bit more like an arrowhead, and uh, then, I'll, then I'll get to hardening. All right, I've got it back in the vise. And what I'm going to do is uh, mark it out so that I have um, a limit to what I want to take off on either side of it and not just uh, start chopping it down like an idiot like I just did and uh, start going to town on it. That's, uh, that's not my goal. I don't want to just go to town and then because I'm going to end up – if I do that, I'm going to end up not having any uh, – any blade left. I'll just, I'll grind it all away into oblivion and then I'm not going to have anything left. So I'm going to draw on how far in I want to take the neck and whenever I'm hitting it with the angle grinder, I can't see that, I need a paint pen. Whenever I'm hitting it with the angle grinder, then at least um, I have a stopping point and I know if I go past that point, then it's going to start messing with the overall design of the punch dagger. As just an eyeballing it right there I made those marks on the side and that's actually gonna look pretty cool once it's uh, ground down right there so angle grinder time and uh, then we're almost gonna be done with this sucker all right after a little bit of accent to it you can see 
that it's uh, starting to slick up a little bit. It looks uh, a little bit more deliberate, more like uh, somebody who knew what they were doing with, made it, even though that's not at all the case. This is the first time I've made one of these, and you can tell. <laughs> I can tell, at least. But I'll start to polish it, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to hide a little bit more mistakes in polishing it and making it look cool. <clears throat> okay, it's going to be very important to me to harden this because uh, dagger points are just inherently weak. You have four points converging, and uh, the tip gets to be very blunt. I'm heating it towards the center because the tip is going to heat up very quickly because there's not much steel there. I don't want that getting too hot while the rest of it is not hot enough. Makes the whole thing a cool black color. Too bad it's not going to stay like that. That's it after the initial polish, just getting all the black off of it everywhere and such. And I used kind of an aggressive wheel because I did have a couple of dings in here from the vise. I got a little bit careless and I needed to take those out. But uh, now I'm going to move on. It, you can see that it's silver, but it's not shiny. You just have to keep moving down in grits until you get where you want it. Give it a quick polish here and see how it, uh, how it uh, turns out. I was wrong. That's not quite as shiny as I want it. It did definitely get a lot better of a polish on it, but I think I'm going to hit it with a uh, buffing wheel now to try to bring that out even more. It's pretty shiny. It's, it's actually a pretty cool piece at this point, but uh, I want to do a little bit more on it. All right. I'm going to call that good. I actually uh, am pretty pleased with the results. It's, uh, it was a fun little project. Uh, it was kind of an uphill battle this time. Like I said, with the um, mini sword out of a nail, just because it's small, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, going to be easier. It looks pretty decent from the front, and I actually accomplished what I wanted to with it. So that one, another one under my belt. I got a punch dagger out of a box and wrench. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.